Okay, I think we'll get started. So today we're going to talk about collisions. There's two extremes to collisions. One in which the particle uh, undergoes what's called an elastic collision, in which no energy is lost to the, to the event. So we just collide and come back out. So energy is conserved in an elastic collision. And then the other extreme is an inelastic collision. So this would be like a, a, sta a marble hitting a stainless steel wall that by and large that's as uh, very close to an elastic collision. Any real collision isn't going to be perfectly elastic. The other extreme uh, is inelastic and this would be like a wad of clay hitting that steel stainless steel wall. And again nothing's going to be perfectly inelastic but a wad of clay hitting the wall will be pretty close. So there energy is lost and transferred to the system. Now, if we have a single system, not a wall here now, but just uh, say two particles, let's make it the simplest system that we can and still have a collision. Let's talk about inelastic collisions first. During an inelastic collision, uh, momentum is conserved for the whole system. Energy is not, and how it's not is that is, we're not violating conservation of energy, but what's happening is during the collision, because we're sticking together, we're causing vibrations within the, within the object and it's effectively heating up the object and we lose that to heat. Also any sound, although sound doesn't carry a ton of uh, energy, most of it's lost as, as heat in the collision. So we need only conservation of momentum to calculate these problems, so let's work through that. Let's say we have two particles. Uh, and we'll stay in one dimension first. Take two particles and um, they're moving along such that one particle will collide with the other. So let's say this guy's moving this way. It could be any way, but let's say this guy's moving and this guy comes in and collides. Now we won't bounce off. We'll collide and stick. So this would be a good example here in chemistry would be if you have a reaction in which two molecules come together and bond and then go off as a single unit. The total initial momentum will be the momentum of the individual pieces, and the final momentum will be one unit. So we think of this as one unit. So this will be mass one plus mass two times its final velocity. Now because of conservation of momentum, delta P is zero. So if we subtract th uh, this from this, in this equation, we get zero equals that, and uh, we can solve some problems. So let's take an example. Say we've got a two kilogram mass, a one kilogram mass. They collide and stick together. The two kilogram mass is moving at five meters per second. The uh, one kilogram mass is moving at three meters per second. Let's calculate the final velocity of the uh, unit that's stuck together. So m1 plus m2 times the final velocity, we don't know this, that's what we're going to solve for, minus 2 times 5, minus 1 times 3, well that gives us 3 v, v final equals 13, or v final equals 13 thirds uh, uh, meters per second. Now let's check to see if energy is conserved, and we said it isn't in any uh, inelastic collision. So let's just calculate the kinetic energy of these before and after the collision. So we use one half mv squared, kinetic energy formula. And so initial, we have the kinetic energy of one plus the kinetic energy of two. That gives us our total kinetic energy. That works out to be 29.5 joules. And then we take the kinetic energy of the final unit, works out to be 28.1 joules. So we indeed lose a little bit of energy. Energy is lost. We have less energy after than before. All right, well, let's take this to two dimensions. Uh, it's straightforward. We just have to do our trigonometry now. So let's take this, this same system, but now uh, this guy, this one that's chasing this one, is coming in at a 30 degree angle. They hit and they'll stick together, 
And if we think about it, this is coming in like this. They're going to hit and they're going to go in some downward direction. This one's moving this way, this way. Probably not the same as this. Probably not the same as this, but something in between. So uh, we can calculate the comp component-wise, the x and y component for the incoming particle using cosine of 30 and sine of 30 for x and y respectively. And then this one happens to be moving only in the x direction. So uh, we can get its py right away is 0. And then uh, its px is just mass times velocity. The final unit, well, we don't know these. Um, but we do know that uh, individually, uh, we need to conserve momentum. So uh, we conserve momentum component-wise. And so this gives us a way to calculate very similarly to the one-dimensional, basically turn it into two one-dimensional problems. And uh, we're able to get the velocity in the x direction and the velocity in the y direction. To get the final momentum, uh, we could multiply by the total mass, and we get this vector here. Uh, whoop, I think I got a, that's a minus five. So we're going down. So our, our, our momentum vector has a slope of uh, over 11, down five for that. So these can come these problems can come in all sorts of different ways you might know the final momentum and have to calculate initial momentum you might have to calculate masses but basically it's this same idea we're using conservation of momentum to solve these problems and we couldn't solve these problems in general if uh, conservation of momentum didn't work all right let's turn our attention to elastic collisions now elastic collisions uh, we said energy is conserved in an elastic collision. So we assume there's no transfer of, well, there's a transfer of energy, but none of that is transferred to the internal workings of the molecule or object. So if two steel ball bearings collide, we don't, yes, technically there are some vibrations and there's some sound, so we do lose some energy. But uh, in the idealized case, we don't lose any energy. So. We can utilize both conservation of momentum and conservation of uh, energy. And so we have these two equations. We know the formulas for momentum and for kinetic energy. We could work out, it's a, it's a bit tedious. So we'll work, we'll, uh, we won't work it out. We'll just write out the, the solutions. So if you plug in all of the equations, so k equals, uh, 1 half mv squared and p equals mv into all of those and then solve for the final velocities of 1 and 2. And this is a one-dimensional problem again. Uh, it would expand by component-wise to two or more dimensions, but it's complicated enough in one dimension, so we'll just leave it as that. And so we uh, get this formula. Notice there's some symmetry here. We have difference in masses over total mass. Total mass is in the denominator everywhere. We have 1 minus 2 over here and 2 minus 1 over here. And then the cross terms here are 2 times m2 and 2 times m1. So there's a bit of symmetry that works out, as we might expect, because we're just labeling one mass and another mass. So that's the general expression. Perhaps you could um, practice and just take, pretend this was not now um, and in inelastic, they didn't stick together, but they had an elastic collision. See if you can work out the final um, velocities. Now, what we're going to do is look at some cases of these. So I think I'll erase uh, the board here and focus in on these cases. So let's look at case one, which is when the second mass is sitting still. It's a little bit darker.
Well, in this situation, v initial v2 initial is 0. And so these terms cancel. And we get that. And so um, the components are given to us by the initial, or the final velocities are given to us by the initial velocity. Uh, oh, this is one initial of just the incoming uh, velocity. Now we do see that the final velocity, as we might expect, when this hits, boom, this will bounce off. The final velocity is. Um, is not zero, so it's um, uh, going to move away as we would expect. All right, let's look at this under the special case of case two. So now we're going to get these terms to cancel here. And so that's interesting. So v1 final. only depends on v2 initial and vice versa. And so they sort of exchange velocities in a, in a weighted way, a mass weighted way. So let's com uh, Yeah, let's, let's combine these two cases here now. Case 3, let's take that as case 1 plus case 2. So case 1 plus case 2. So from case 2, we have this. And now we have v2 initial equals 0. So v1 final equals 0. Um, and v2 final equals 2 mass 1 m1 m2 v1. So that's kind of an interesting case there. So if v2 is sitting still and then this mass comes in, uh, we will. Oh, I, I shouldn't have twos here. Yeah, these are just. They will just exchange velocities. Um, and case two says they'll exchange velocities. This is an interesting case where the initial case is zero. So this will come in, hit, and go. Hit and go. Okay. Great. And let's do case four, which is also interesting. This is when M2 is much, much less than M1. So like a freight train and a ping pong ball. So the one final is then approximately equal to, well, compared to M1, M2 is going to be essentially nothing. So we will get M1 over M1, which will cancel v1 initial. And then this will be essentially 0, because we'll have m2 very, very small over m1, which is very big. v1 initial. And then v2 final. 
This will be 2M1 over M1, basically. One V1 initial. Well, this will be minus M1 over M1. V2 initial. So this is approximately equal to 2 V1 initial minus V2 initial. So let's uh, look at this. If this freight train is coming and we throw a ping pong ball at it, well, the final the final velocity of that freight train is not going to change, right? We'll just keep going at the same speed. Um, this is uh, let's see. Let's let's do two cases here now. So let's imagine that freight train going very very slowly. We throw a ping pong ball. That should behave very much like a ping pong ball we throw against the wall. And if the freight train is going very slowly, such that this is basically zero, which a wall would be. So a wall, you could think of that as a, a the freight train has come to a stop. So huge mass, but velocity is zero. Then we just get a rebound, an elastic rebound of minus the incoming uh, initial velocity of that ping pong ball. Now this is a little, uh, then let's take the other case where the ping pong ball is sitting still and the freight train comes and hits it. So the tra freight train comes and hits it, um, maybe a little counterintuitive, although it, you kind of think that if the freight train hits it, it will bounce off, right? So this is sitting still. So it won't necessarily do that, but it'll do this. And so then the velocity that this takes off with is twice the velocity it got hit by. So if it gets hit by something very big, then it'll take off, it'll bounce off of that um, with the velocity twice that. So looking at some of the limiting cases of this is pretty interesting and it helps us develop an intuition about uh, the general case. And uh, so as we think about molecules, uh, we can often think about either an elastic collision in which the, uh, there's a bond that forms and they go off together, or an inelastic collision where they bounce off of each other, uh, conserving the total energy. Now, getting into more of the details, if we have, and we know mo molecules have geometry, so we might hit and impart a spin, uh, some kind, or kind of angular rotation, and that then gets more complicated. Uh, and so we would have to worry about some of the internal dynamics or a vibration. We might initiate a vibration in the molecule. And so that can get pretty complicated. Um, but we can think about a lot of the kinetic behavior of uh, chemistry just based on sim this simple collision. And we will, in um, uh, second or third introductory course, um, we'll talk about uh, simple collision theory for, um, for chemistry.